First of all, I'm a person with disability. So when I talk about a person with disability, I talk from a point of experience. I feel their pain. I've gone through challenges that I've gone through. I know what they are going through, not in towns, but also in villages. Because I remember there was one day that my crutches broke while I was taking care of my father's cows in the bush at around 11 a.m. And uh, the cows uh, grazed until in the evening and they went home. But they could not say where they have left me. I crawled for almost three kilometers. I was found 48 hours later. Tired, thirsty, hungry, and at night I was rain on, and even there was a, a leopard, which uh, it is only, I think, God who saved me from the leopard, because it actually roared roar around me, and I thought it will, uh, it will attack me. So I stayed still because I knew there is nothing I could do. Uh, and it was dark, so I waited for it to attack from any angle so that I can struggle with it if I can't. Uh, I was found 48 hours later. So I can imagine the pain other persons with disability are going through. I know when I was in primary school, my crutches could break. And if they break, I have to crawl to classroom. But that one is even better. Crawling into the primary school pit latrine. There are children soil everywhere. And using the same soil hand to feed really diminishes your self-esteem. So I know what they are going through. So when I was uh, appointed as the chairman, National Council for Personal Disability, uh, I already had experience. I already had led a caucus of uh, personal disability in the University of Nairobi. Uh, so already I was advocating for the rights of personal disability. Not only from the point of information, but from the point of experience. So when I went there, I wanted to change a few things. One, we wanted to bring integrated system of education to raise the self-esteem of persons with disabilities. Because we had uh, special schools. And if you take me to a special school and I become number one, I will only believe that I'm number one among the disabled, among the rejected. Yes? But if you take me to an integrated primary school and I become number one, I will know that, oh yes, so and so can defeat me in the field while we are running. But I can also defeat them in class, in exams. So we are equal. It's only that is stronger in the field, but I'm also stronger in exams or in class. That will raise the self-esteem. It will also bring the relationship between the person with disability and the able-bodied so that they can have a symbiotic kind of relationship. Because if we give them to go to special schools, will you have a special university? Will you have a special supermarket? Will you have a special workplace? At the end of the day, they will come and interact. The earlier they interact when they are children, the better for us to develop that symbiotic kind of relationship. In my primary school and secondary school, there are friends we identified and knew that because I am with crutches, I cannot carry buckets of water. They will carry the buckets of water, but because when I sit down, I'm strong, I will wash all the clothes. There's somebody called Patrick Malin in Kericho High School who used to have that symbiotic kind of relationship. Fetch water, but I'll wash all the cloth, mine and his. And please, they underline the word all, because he used to bring everything. <laughs> so anyway, so when we advocated about inclusive education, it have really raised the self-esteem of so many uh, people with disability. But uh, again, uh, there are categories of disabilities that we cannot bring into inclusive education. Cerebral palsy, for instance, autism, for instance, 
mental disability, for instance, you know, it is very difficult to bring them on board. And also, to some extent, uh, the, the, deaf, uh, the deaf community. Although we are trying so that most teachers are uh, equipped with sign language, so that as they teach, they can also sign. But before that, uh, we will have uh, schools that are specifically for the deaf, hence there are special schools. So we have integrated a majority of them. That is my one uh, agenda when I came, I came to the National Council for Personal Disability, which I believe we did achieve. Again, we wanted to make Kenya Sign Language a national language, which we did. Again, Kenya Sign Language is the third official language in Kenya, examinable in our Kenya National Examination Council, so that as the kids grow up, they can be able to communicate with the deaf, not necessarily because they are deaf, but because they are members of our society. Uh, again, we wanted to approach uh, in a way that person with disability seek opportunities rather than sympathy. In, a, uh, in doing so, we put more money on uh, education of person with disability. So there is a, a lot of bursary in National Government Affirmative Action Fund, National Council for Person with Disability, National uh, Disabled Fund of Kenya, and even in county bursaries, we say that there must be a specific amount for person with disability. Even in Wings to Fly, private uh, sponsorship, we normally ask them to allocate some to person with disability. Uh, we also have money for economic empowerment because there are those who did not go to school, but they can still be economically empowered. So the money is National Council for Personal Disability. It's also in National Government Affirmative Action Fund and the National Disabled Fund of Kenya. So already we have that one to empower them. But again, there are those category of personal disability whom you cannot educate and you cannot economically empower them. Cerebral palsy, severely disabled personal disability. So we decided to have cash transfer so that the caretakers who don't go for kibaruas so that they can take care of this uh, 20 year old who still need diapers uh, they can get something we give them 2000 uh, per month I know it's not enough but it's at least something that they can buy food with and again uh, from there we also give them national hospital insurance fund cover because it's a thin line between disability and, uh, and medical condition so that when they get sick they are also treated we also wanted to inculcate the culture of accessibility within the society. You know, when I went to the National Council for Personal Disability, I was told so, so many buildings are not accessible, we have the law, we can close them, but you know, we are in a third world country. We need these investors. You scare away investors, you have scared away job opportunities. So we, uh, we need to balance between scaring away investors and implementing some of our laws. One of them is the law on uh, disability which require that all built environment should be accessible to persons with disability, including even transport. But I decided, let me inculcate it so that it will be a culture from within. So we had a unit in the training of architectures and engineers that is specifically on accessibility so that at least as they advise their customers on uh, architecture drawing on buildings, they also have to tell them the importance of having accessibility in their respective buildings whether commercial or private. In commercial, you can have a lawyer on a wheelchair. So being accessible does not mean that you are disabled yourself. So we inculcate that uh, culture of uh, knowing the importance of uh, disability from the training of architectures and engineers. Again, we decided that in the ministry, department and agency of government, as they fill the performance contract uh, forms, or there is an indicator that is awarded max on disability mainstreaming. How many persons with disability have you employed? Is your uh, ministry, department or agency accessible to persons with disability, customers with disability or uh, employees with disability? Then you will be awarded marks on that. So there is a lot we have really done to achieve that. Currently, uh, we are signing the African Protocol on Persons with Disability. We are already discussed in the parliament. I was one of the drafters of the same and I'm sure we will be able uh, to put it in place. We also formed the National Council for the East African Council for Personal Disability in line with that Article 120C of the East African Community. So I think with those we really uh, tried a lot, but I want to 
ask person disability to believe in themselves, to seek sympathy, uh, opportunities, not sympathy, and again to know that uh, disability is not a qualification. So as we seek job opportunities, you must be employable. If you want uh, positions of leadership, you must also be aggressive to get them because disability is not a qualification. Even though Kenyatta National Hospital have not employed surgeons with disability, we cannot pick somebody from the village to become a surgeon simply because they are person with disability so that we can have person with disability working in Kenyatta. It's not possible. You must have gone through the training. So for you also to be employed, you must be employable. Disability is not a qualification. We must be aggressive, making sure that we are employable and aggressive in political parties so that we get these opportunities that our constitution are given to us. In the economic empowerment, as I have told you, there are people we can empower economically by giving them funds uh, that are uh, domiciled in National Government Affirmative Action Fund, National Council for Persons with Disability, and even National uh, Development Fund, Disabled Fund of Kenya. So we can give them to start small businesses. But again, we can empower them by having a specific percentage of all government tenders or contracts being allocated to persons with disability. And that is why we came up with ACPO. Uh, using the assistance of uh, the then member of parliament nominated by TNA called Johnson Sakaja. That we came up with a policy that our president decided to, uh, to make it a law that all government tenders, there is what we call ACPO, Access to Government Procurement Opportunities by Persons with Disabilities, Women and Youth. So there is 30% of all government tenders, whether national government or county government, even in CDF, that 30% of all their contracts or their tenders should be allocated to the three groups, persons with disabilities, women, and youth. Uh, unfortunately, uh, women are uh, more aggressive than the two other in the group because uh, they can use their husbands to apply for tenders. So they end up taking 25%. Uh, youth are faster than us, so they take 4.5. So 0 0.5 is left for person with disability. And even this 0 0.5, sometimes, because of the way we are viewed, that we are people seeking favors, uh, they give us supply of toothpick, supply of toilet papers, supplies of newspapers, something that does not economically change the life of an individual. And that is why we approached the then Minister of uh, in Treasury, uh, Henry Rotich, that let us specify first that at least 2% have a policy or uh, what do you call uh, a directive that at least 2% of the 30% should be reserved for persons with disability. And yes, we ended up having the 2% being reserved to us. Uh, again, there was a lot of challenges because it's a feature circle of poverty among persons with disabilities. So uh, when I was in the National Council for Persons with Disability, I started a farm, a farm called uh, LPO Financing that you can earn a tender as a person with disability. You will apply for money from National Council for Persons with Disability we will pay direct to your suppliers, we will supply to the government, and the government will pay in a joint account between you and National Council of Persons Ability so that they can get their money and then you keep the profit. If you keep the profit two times, then of course you are economically empowered, you can now apply for a tender and uh, uh, implement it on your own. So at least we have done that. And again, uh, for person with albinism, because uh, they are physically able, we have been able to advocate that they are observing in army. You have seen them in NYS, disciplinary forces, they are there. We have also provided sunscreen lotion for, to protect them from the sun rays so that they, we protect them from getting cancer, uh, skin cancer. We have also given them protective clothing. You know, some of them must read because uh, they are low vision. So you find them reading this way. So we have uh, provided them with eye uh, checkup 
and uh, sunglasses together with magnifying lenses for those who are in school and also we were able to provide tablets to all uh, people with albinism during my time that are in schools so that their notes they can enlarge and put them in the font that they can be able to read comfortably. So there is a lot actually we did and I did when I was in the National Council for Persons with Disability during those three years. So many people uh, and Kenyans will see you as a member of parliament. They will think you are born as a member of parliament or because you have connection. You hear people talking about you don't have connection, you don't know so and so. You know, these opportunities are grabbed. They are never given. Because who will give you? You must grab them. You must look for those opportunities. You, you, you know the highest position that my father ever held was being a, a chairman of the relief food when he was actually giving relief food to uh, women uh, during drought. So that is the highest position he ever had. So I did not have any connection. But uh, I made sure that I'm aggressive enough in a political party. I use even my crutches to make sure that I'm closer to the powers that will be. You know, when you go to the podium, yes, I... I enlarge my crutches and make sure that nobody is between me and the president or, uh, or the deputy president. Yes, and even if you try to push me, I'll tell you, hey, Niko Karibu, Kuanguka, you are almost, I'm also almost falling down. And since you sympathize with my disability, you'll go back. But I just want to grab and have photos with the president and the deputy president. And by having photos, every now and then when they see uh, the, the album, they see Sangok. And you know, the more you see me, the more you befriend me and the more you believe that I was defending you. And at the end of the day, even your friends will ask you, even your family will ask you, where is this guy nowadays? Eh? You did not give them anything in government now that you have the government. You know, it's even people who will ask uh, opportunities for me. So some of these opportunities are taken aggressively. So just come out of your hideouts, you know. Just uh, be aggressive enough and, and uh, don't be selfish. Don't be jealous of those who are there. That is why I'm calling all of you to take this opportunity that I have in 2022 because I'm retiring. I call upon all of you to take an opportunity that I had in the National Council of Persons with Disability. Mushiri came, not all of you came, and he took the opportunity. So the, these opportunities are earned, and uh, you get them through being aggressive uh, enough, and you will uh, definitely uh, get them. You know, when you sit and start uh, becoming jealous and spend a lot of time describing how so-and-so is lucky, how so-and-so is a uh, uh, hard connection. Let me tell you, with your jealousy. And you know, Jackie, jealousy is the stepping stone to sorcery. It's the last class that you go through to graduate as a sorcerer and a witch. You know, don't, don't, don't forget about other people. Channel your own path. And you know, I am not competing with anybody. Jackie, I'm not competing with you because I don't even know how many years God has given you. I don't know your life journey. I don't know where you are going to. You know, I'm competing against myself in life. Where am I today? Where do I want to go tomorrow? What is my vision? As prescribed by the book of Abacuc 2, 2 to 3, write you your vision in plain tablets. Because the vision will eventually come. It may delay, but it will come. So, uh, write your vision. Be aggressive enough to make sure that you achieve your uh, vision. Have dreams. And not have dreams that Sangok have. No. Your own dreams because you are not competing. We, we, you don't know where I'm going. I don't know where you are going. Yes, you see people when you are driving on the road. You try to overtake somebody. He increases speed. He doesn't know if you have a sick person you are taking to hospital. He doesn't know where you are going to. He's, you are just branching next <laughs> in the next uh, junction. But he, he will try to compete with you. So don't try to compete with me because we have different life journeys. Just compete against yourself. Make sure that where you are today is not where you are tomorrow. Make sure that you better your future. And make sure that you have a dream. But having a dream is very, totally easy. But paying the price to make that dream come true is where the problem is. Because the bigger the dream, 
the bigger the price. You can't dream of owning KICC. Uh, you, your ambitions or the price that you will pay is a price of uh, a lifeless cow. No, 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 no. For you to have KICC, the price is there. It's bigger. For you to have a manyata, the price is smaller. Because you just go to the bush, get some sticks and get some mud cow, uh, mud, mud, uh, cow dung, and then you have a house. But for you to have KICC, the price is a bit higher. And uh, in our way of uh, achieving our visions, there's a lot of obstacles. Sometimes it is God who tells you that you are not ready for it. You know? Because if today I tell God and I pray that God give me a car, and God sees that why I want a car is because I want to show off. And the process of showing off, I'll get an accident and die. God may say, no, this is not the time. You'll get later. So just be patient enough. Don't give up. You know, these things are coming. Now, when it comes to my business of Sim Country Lodge, uh, we decided that we will nurture uh, new talents from people who never went to school. We also decided that we have our own path, not the professional path of hotels. And that is why we have uh, Jichinjie, Jichome, Jienjoy, a slogan that I'm sure you don't know whether it is anywhere else in any other hotel. Again, we have the lover's nest, a house on top of a tree. And it's completely a nest because apart from the PVC pipe uh, that is uh, from the toilet and the metallic ladder that you used to climb, it does not touch the ground at all and they have no other artificial pillars. It is completely a nest on top of a tree. Uh, so it is a new uh, model altogether, where when two people come, of course we are only allow two people of opposite sex. Uh, not necessarily with a marriage certificate. They may be quoting, and we allow them. So they come into the nest. Uh, once they have entered inside, we remove the ladder. Uh, because uh, ladies are uh, very funny. They can change their mind uh, uh, midway. And you know, we want the man to get the value of his money now that the, the house is a bit expensive. Uh, so we remove the ladder until very early in the morning. So, uh, that is the only time we'll bring the ladder so that you stay there and do all business that pertain a lover's nest until morning at 9 uh, a.m. Uh, there is also a bed and there is a two armchairs and a table and a toilet. And more importantly, there is a fridge that have a lot of uh, drinks for the sake of rehydration. And uh, since the house is on top of a tree, you will find that uh, it will sway, swing uh, from the wind. And that one gives you a, a feeling of like turbulence in an aeroplane. But in an aeroplane, Whenever they experience turbulence, you'll be told to fasten your safety belt. But here, you have no alternative but to fasten the grip. For the youth that we have employed, we, we have made a culture, we have developed our own culture, in which nobody is a boss. You will see them now. Uh, they will not even know that I'm a member of parliament. By the way, they put the same uniform as me. So we meet each other and we are like the owners of the business. And uh, the business have grown and have grown with its own culture. Qualification, they don't have any, but we train them. Before the OSIM became a training uh, institution of hotels, we used to take them to bigger hotels like uh, Chester in Nairobi or other hotels, where we pay their salary, but they work in those hotels so that they can gain the knowledge. Uh, lastly, uh, for the rooms, we use uh, deaf people who cannot hear. Because cleanliness does not require talking. And again, these guys do a thorough job. Because they don't want you to come and make noise, because they cannot hear you. So when you tell them this is what I want to be done, they will do it perfectly to avoid any commotion because they will not hear, they will see your lips, they don't know if you are annoyed, 
If you are abusing them, they don't know. So they will try and do a perfect job. Another thing uh, is that they, are, they always concentrate 100%. Most of the chefs are uh, qualified Morans who have gone to Moranism. So they are very good in traditional foods. So we have also that uh, unique uniqueness of having the best traditional meals here. Lastly, we reduce suppliers by making sure that uh, I rear chicken so that I sell the eggs, sell the chicken to the hotel. Uh, I also do irrigation along uh, River Wasongro so that I have fresh vegetables uh, and I do organic farming because what they do outside, they can even spray insecticide to the vegetables in the morning and sell to you in the evening. And that's a source of cancer. So for me to be able to safeguard uh, the health of my customers, I do my own organic farming by using manure from my cows and uh, using uh, parathrum and uh, traditional onions to chase away insects. Uh, I also have dairy cows, as I have shown you, so I supply milk here. Uh, and you know, in business, when you cut away suppliers, you find that suppliers take huge profits. So if I can remain with the profit, I can be able to now uh, at least give reasonable prices to my clients. And those who will spend at the lover's nest, there is a hub called Kepanyeng that we give them. It is a hub that we used to give Morans when they have just graduated into adulthood, when they are ready to marry, so that they can give birth very quickly so that we can increase in population. So here we have given a few people, and when they go back to their respective country, especially foreigners, uh, uh, their ladies have been calling us that this man was very strong when he was there. And then uh, we tell them, come back, and we give again recognition and you know what will happen. <laughs> <laughs>